Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Q1 FY23 earnings conference call of Alicon Castle Oil Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Mayank Vaswani from CDR India. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you. Good day, everyone, and thank you for joining us on Alicorn Castillo Limited's Q1 FY23 earnings conference call. We have with us on the call today Mr. Rajiv Sikhan, Group CEO, Mr. Vimal Gupta, Group CFO, Mr. Shekhar David, Chief Operating Officer of Alicorn Castillo Limited. Mr. Andreas Hind, Managing Director of Elitman Castelloy, and Rajiv Gupta, Head of Domestic Business of Alicorn Castelloy Limited. Mr. Vimal Gupta will cover the financial performance for the quarter, following which Mr. Dravid will walk us through the operating highlights. In order to share more granular view of the initiatives towards both the global and domestic markets, we also have Mr. Andreas Hind and Mr. Rajiv Gupta to provide insights on these areas. Following the comments from the team, our group CEO, Mr. Rajiv Sikhan, will give us a brief summary of the quarter gone by and encapsulate the strategic imperatives. Thereafter, we shall open the forum for a Q&A session. Before we begin, I would like to point out that some of the statements made in today's call may be forward-looking in nature, and a disclaimer to this effect has been included in the earnings documents shared with all of you earlier. I would now like to hand over the floor to Mr. Vimal Gupta for his opening remarks. Over to you, sir. Good morning to all our investors. I hope that all of you and your near and dear ones are safe and well. Thank you for taking the time out to join our earning call. We have started the new fiscal year 2023 on a positive note despite multiple challenges on the macroeconomic front such as a wallet volatile economic backdrop, lingering supply chain issues, ongoing COVID dynamics, and the continuation of the Russia-Ukraine war. For the mobility customers, the sharp rise in input prices has led to price hikes by OEMs, while increase in fuel costs has contributed to higher cost of ownership of vehicles. Further, there has been a backdrop of high inflation impacting discretionary income even as increasing interest rates are further contributing to the pressures. Despite this potent mix of challenges, the demand environment across domestic and international markets has remained resilient and is turning favorable. We have witnessed higher than expected volumes across the global and domestic industry. Standard & Poor's Global has recently revised upwards their projections for global light vehicles production for calendar year 2022 from 4.1% to 4.7%. In India, we have witnessed increased traction in auto sales, especially in the passenger vehicle and medium heavy commercial vehicle categories in the industry. On a year-on-year -year basis, we have seen sharp increase in volume performance due to the low pace of the prior quarter combined with the improved availability of semiconductors in the quarter one of FY23. Based on our assessment, the domestic industry has now revived to around 80% of the performance benchmark set in financial year 2018-19, which was the best year in the last five years. Overall, our total income stood at rupees 344 crores, higher by 63% year-on-year -year basis, which significantly outpaces industry growth, which was around 39% year-on-year. More importantly, in 2018-19, which was the best year for the industry in the last five years, we reported revenue of 298 crore in the first quarter, even with the industry at around 80% of the level of 18-19 at present. We have significantly outpaced the benchmark and our revenues of 344 crore in quarter one FY23 are 15% higher than the previous highest quarter one, indicating the different trajectory of performance. 
we are also pleased to make progress on our strategic objectives this quarter our focus on opportunities from the ev technologies is being widened in scope of a focus of carbon neutral technologies this wider ambit and encompasses opportunities from battery electric vehicles hybrid electric vehicles plug in hybrid as well as fuel cells and hydrogen cell technologies which are also emerging as viable options across the mobility landscape secondly we had talked about a focus on shifting towards higher value addition across all of our business activities this quarter there is a visible shift away from two wheeler business which has limited value addition towards passenger vehicles and the commercial vehicles export and the evs on the carbon neutral opportunities where the scope of value addition is large if you were to observe our last three years trend which we have included in the earning presentation we would see how our product mix has evolved input prices continue to move higher in quarter 1 as we have spoken last quarter we have been constantly collaborating with our customers to undertake price revisions and have successfully passed on some part of increased cost in the quarter apart from repricing the enhanced product and revenue mix have enabled us to deliver stable margins in the face of a challenging environment we have recorded incremental sales from value added components which has supported improved margin performance our gross margin for the quarter stood at 47.5% in quarter 1 fy23 against 50.2% in quarter 1 of fy22 we witnessed raw material prices peaked out in quarter 1 at present and at present rm prices are around 10% lower than quarter 1 level coming to the cost metric we continue to face challenges related to the 5c framework that we had discussed earlier the covid impact chip shortages issue cost of new product development the conflict between russia and ukraine and global cost based inflation together are serving up a highly dynamic operating environment one of the key challenges last quarter is the reduction in gas supply to europe which is resulting in a domino effect on energy cost across the globe as europe seeks alternate energy supplies this means that global sales gas prices coal prices and that of crude oil continue to remain at elevated levels industries with <laughs> with intensive power requirements such as industrial metals foundries etc have also been hit in the hardest in quarter 4 and in the quarter under review we have witnessed a significant increase in power cost across our operation anticipating this we have moved to set up a captive solar power project which will serve around one third of our annual requirement overhead across the business continued to move higher in quarter 1 the cost optimization initiatives implemented earlier have enabled us to substantially mitigate this impact on our our operational performance the kaizen principle based initiatives that we have adopted have helped helped us bring in optimization across all facets of our business model right from inventory management employee expenses to power cost optimization among others we have seen a notable reduction in fixed expenses overhead and interest expenses as a result of these initiatives the bidita margin stood at 11% higher by 251 bps year on year basis in a normalized environment our medium term target is to improve our ebitda margin to a level of 14 to 15% on the back of our cost efficiency measures in absolute term our ebitda during the quarter came at rupees 37.95 crore higher by 110% year on year profit after tax during the quarter stood at 10.77 crore i am happy to share that we have delivered a performance surpassing the pre covid levels on the capex front we plan to deploy around 90 crores in the fy23 
which includes maintenance effects and new machinery machining capacities on which in the quarter we have already undertaken a 20 rupees 24 crore capex currently our manufacturing plants in india and europe continue to operate at normalized utilization level to the tune of 65 to 67% in the quarter to summarize we have seen a encouraging start to the fiscal year 2023 we continue to focus towards augmenting and maintaining our financial fitness our focus continues to be on improving margins return ratios and streamlining our working capital cycle in a normalized environment we look forward to delivering a strong and sustainable growth on that note i would like now to hand over to mr shekhar dravid who will talk about operating highlights for the quarter thank you vimal greetings to all i trust all of you are well and staying safe the domestic auto sector saw a significant demand improvement in the quarter with most categories witnessing encouraging traction passenger vehicles commercial vehicles and three wheeler segments registered an improved performance on year on year basis backed by the pent up demand improved availability of semiconductor festive push new product development and in case of commercial vehicles and heavy vehicles factors such as increased infra spend mining activities logistic growth and resumption of school sales added demand on the production front we saw steady levels across oem which augur well on the raw material front we have seen cool, cooling off in aluminum and related alloy prices recently this is mitigating costs to a large extent higher cheap availability and unfolding supply chain issues further supported this traction on the domestic front we had projected industry growth of around 5% in 2022 but the expectation is now being raised to 7% growth for the full year internationally trends continues to be favorable as global customers have adapted to the challenges like constraint availability of semiconductors as well as realignment of the supply chain we are seeing healthy leads and inquiries from our international business segment and remain optimistic of delivering growth going forward on a consolidated basis we have reported a strong growth our volumes marked an healthy double digit growth translating to 63% increase in revenues on year on year basis at the start of the financial year we have budgeted for the growth of around 18 to 20% on year on year basis on the back of new parts of to part to commence production new customers added and the business mix shifting towards higher value addition our assumption was the market environment would be largely benign however we are now seeing improved market condition also contribution and have raised our internal budget for growth to 25 to 28% on year on year basis let me take you through the highlights of our performance across each domain the first being our auto business the domestic auto sector has seen many headwinds in last four years adversely impacting due to covid demand regulatory changes input pressure among the others however we are now seeing emerging positive buys with uptick up in demand despite higher value higher fuel prices there is increasing traction in it vehicles too we deliver strong volume growth across verticals in the quarter this has due to the increased volume on account of the start of production of a key program for a global customer we have two programs set to go live in the current quarter which will lead to a further ramp in volume coming coming now to the second of our growth pillars which is the carbon neutral technologies opportunity while we anticipated stronger demand in electric two wheeler segment in india there has been a lot of negative news in the domestic market regarding battery explosions which seems to have impacted customer sentiment however the passenger vehicle ecosystem is progressing well in india leading to a impressive volume growth and rapid approach towards critical mass in 2021 330 330 lakh 30000 units of evs were registered in india 
clocking a growth of 168% as compared to 2020. The increase was on the back of performance towards higher personal mobility, environment friendliness, and spiking fuel prices. The second phase of faster adoption and manufacturing of hybrid and electric vehicles, same two, has further accelerated the adoption of electric two-wheelers, which has witnessed close to 1,10,000 units in quarter one 2022. As per a report by Indian Venture and Alternative Capital Association in collaboration with EY and Indus Law, electric vehicles are expected to account for 39% of the total automotive sales in India by year 2027, growing at an approximately 68% of CAGR over the next five years. For this segment, we are working with OEMs as well as the Tier 1 suppliers, which have been working extensively with Dana Corporation, Scania, Tata Atocom, Eaton on both the domestic and international orders. During this quarter, we added two parts as well as two new logos of Remax and Ducati. After some gap, we are pleased to add new logos to our customer list. Another area where we are seeing strong response from customers is the light weighting of products in the auto and EV space. We are getting increased inquiries from the OEM, both in domestic and export market, and we are actively developing new parts to focus on this segment. We have already built up a portfolio of over 103 parts catering to EV and are progressing well on our target for scaling up revenues from carbon neutral technology. While we have shared that on initial target, it is to bring to the wallet share of carbon neutral technology to 25% of overall revenues by 2025-26. Our existing order book already comprises share of business of 25%. As this converts from order into a start of production, we will achieve our target for the share of revenue from carbon neutral technologies in an accelerated manner. Based on this high visibility, we, shall, we had shared an accelerated target of 26% from carbon neutral technologies by 2025-26. Now on to our third growth pillar, the technology agnostic platform. We are steadily adding value added products to our basket. Various aspects of our vehicles are, are cross-functional across both IC and carbon neutral platforms and would remain relevant should there be emergence of a new alternative technology too. Our aim is, is to ensure that we gain relevance in interesting and accretive niche around these products by leveraging our core competency. In this regard, we are working on diversifying and expanding our portfolio to include several niche and value enhancing offerings. During the quarter, we added one part to this portfolio. Coming to our fourth segment, which is a non auto business, in this we are witnessing healthy growth in demand from the diverse sectors we serve. During the quarter, we received an order win for one part. This is under the Atmanirbhar Bharat where we quickly developed a complex and critical part for a reputed domestic customer. Our fifth growth lever is our focus on improving customer wallet share. This will be by leveraging our R&D and competencies and our relationship. Our R&D facilities are core to our operations and enable us to keep pace with upcoming opportunities. Overall, we are well placed to enhance contributions from repeat customers and demonstrate customers' stickiness. Our long-term approach is towards building wallet share and positioning ourselves as a trusted supplier for an existing customer base. On that note, I would like to now hand it over to Mr. Andrea's hand to throw light on our global business. Thank you, Mr. Tavish. A welcome to all of you. I will briefly cover the development on our international business. We have delivered a healthy performance in this month during the quarter 
of the bank of Tarigemaur in Germany, in our key global markets of the US, Europe, and China. While we were seeing initial signs of supply chain issues eating across markets, the ongoing conflict has been inflationary pressures of some key inputs. So we look at aluminium prices and steel prices at um, elevated I, levels in I'm sorry to interrupt, sir. Yeah. Uh, your voice is not clear, sir. I'm coming a little bit uh, the mic. Um, so the ongoing conflict at the dependent inflationary pressure of some key inputs. So we witness a aluminium prices and steel prices Andre, at Andre, elevated Andre, levels. In uh, I'm sorry, sir. Yeah. Andre, your voice is not yeah. clear. I request all. I, it, uh, Mr. Hanif, it, I'll, it's now more clear. Uh, I'll reconnect you. All right. Thank you. I request all participants to stay connected while we connect Mr. Andreas Hein. Andrea speak here again. I am audible. Yes, please go ahead. Yeah, so I will start again uh, for my speech. Thank you, Mr. Kravik. A warm welcome to all of you. I will briefly cover the developments on our international business. We have delivered a healthy performance in Ilikman during the quarter on the back of steady demand environment in our key global customers of US. Europe and China. While we are seeing initial signs of supply chain issues easing across markets, the ongoing conflict has dependent inflationary pressures of some key inputs. So we witness aluminium prices and steel prices at elevated levels in quarter four and quarter one. And in what occupied by the operation rise in gas prices, elevating power costs in Europe. The rising prices of inputs are a path through to customers and we are working with them to arrive at the formula for higher energy costs too. Further, we are awaiting installation of solar power to specify our energy mix. An important point to share here is that our manufacturing facility is located in Slovakia, which is the second most assured nation in Europe in terms of gas availability. Slovakia already has a short stock of gas up to April 23 and will further augment its stocks in the coming weeks and months. Against this backdrop, we have reported a weak performance in the international business exports, including overseas revenues contributed to 23% of the total revenue in quarter one financial year 23. We've added two new parts from two global customers in the quarter. We developed a motorhouse in Torimac, an associate company of Porsche, which holds 45% ownership. Remark is purchased at the Tesla of Europe, and we commenced supplies to Remark Auto in this quarter. For them, the leverage learnings from customers served in the past and living us to drive solution in shorter time frame. We are able to develop a motor housing in three months against normal cycle of five to six months. Further remark also has engineering division which supplies to large global audience, including its parent company Porsche. We also took a thermal engineering project for Remark, which is working on development EV parts for other audience. They have a huge potential to build on these new supply arrangements. This development will help us to create more such businesses from global and domestic OEMs. We also add Ducati to our customer roster in this quarter. 
Ducati is the third largest two-wheeler manufacturer in Europe. The largest is KTM followed by BMW, both of which we have been customers for over two decades now. With the addition of Ducati, all three the largest European two-wheeler OEMs are part of our customer list. For Ducati, we developed a Swingham through our gravity die casting process, which offers a solution with greater energy at more competitive costs. As we look ahead, we are monitoring the evolving lake across the global market. The demand for traditional technologies remains relevant, even as demand for carbon neutral technology continues to operate in the medium of long term. There are many growth opportunities in our key target market in Europe, Middle East and the US. Inisman is actively building its presence in these regions, and we are confident of improving performance as the environment normalizes. On this note, I would like now to hand over to Mr. Rajiv Gupta, who will cover the development in the domestic business for the quarter. Thank you, Andreas. Good day, everyone. The Indian automotive industry has posted robust growth in the quarter one by with passenger and commercial vehicle segments logging growth, with two-wheelers witnessing steady redemption in demand. We are also seeing encouraging indicators such as improved production levels from OEMs, strong buildup in inquiries, and increasing trend in order books. These positive trends bode well for the industry and in turn for Alicon. In the quarter, we have delivered a strong performance. Total contribution from our domestic segment stood at 77%. On the whole, we have reported encouraging growth in the domestic auto segment during the quarter led by improved, improving trends, such as push, higher preference towards personal mobility. We continue to witness good level of inquiries and bookings in the market and are hopeful that improving macros will further support this momentum. In the non-auto business, we received an order win from one part from a reputed industrial house in India. This complex and critical part will support the rollout of a cutting-edge technology for a customer and falls under the prestigious Atmanirbhar Bharat program. On this note, I would like now request Group CEO Mr. Rajiv Sikhan to share with you in perspective on Alicon performance. Thank you. <clears throat> Good day, everyone. We have reported a healthy set of results during the first quarter of fiscal 2023. Our growth has been driven across businesses of auto, non-auto, and structural and technology agnostic products across domestic and international markets. We have marked strong client engagement and have demonstrated healthy progress against new customer leads. We added a total of two new logos across markets and verticals, and our wallet share has been on an improving trend. We have chalked out a focus on global customers and invested significantly into human resources and R&D in order to enhance our globally competitiveness. We challenge ourselves to develop a greater proportion of critical and complex parts. We have pushed our teams to think of providing solutions to customers rather than focusing on parts or components enabling us to transform the business model. The logos we have added and our presence with top three European 2W OEM validates our progress to this enhanced approach. Another element of our strategy that I've shared was to increasing footprint of passenger vehicles and series in our value addition mix from 50% in FY22 
to 70 percent in five years while reducing QW dependency from 40 percent in FY22 to under 20 percent in next five years or earlier. Further, we are increasing the share of global business from 37 percent in FY22 sorry, to over 45 percent in next five years. The focus is clearly on a higher value addition and as a team we are obsessively monitoring the VA per kg. We also aim to increase our sales per machine by enhancing the proportion of machine parts in comparison to as cars at present. I'm pleased to, pleased to share that this is starting to reflect in our performance. With the industry growing 39% on a year-to-year basis, we have all performed in a meaningful way, reported a revenue growth of 63% year-on-year in Q1. Further, we have rebranded our focus from EV into carbon neutral technologies, which mirrors the wider focus by our team. This is reflective of the potential technology mix that we foresee in the mobility sector over the rest of the decade and beyond. We also seek to build out our contribution from structural parts which are technology agnostic. Currently, the contribution from carbon neutral and structural parts is 17 percent and we aim to take this to over 45 percent in five years' time. On operational efficiencies, we have optimized costs across our business model and brought in higher efficiencies that enable us to restrict the impact of costs on our margin profile during the quarter. We are actively working towards increasing our sustainability footprint and ensuring commissioning of our captive solar plant will significantly transform our energy mix. I would once again reiterate that we are future ready. As an organization, we enjoy a favorable outlook on the back of global recovery. We see a strong demand trend. However, we see some challenges in which may emerge from U.S. and these we have to take into account. And already, as my colleagues have shared, the five challenges which are ongoing, corona pandemic, chip shortage, cost-based inflation, the conflict in Russia and Ukraine, higher cost of new product development, we are well placed to deliver on our targets and aspirations through our commitment, courage, confidence, and capability supported by the right behaviors of forcing issues and providing support proactively. Our total order booking for auto business now stands at around rupees 3,115 crore for a period of five years with an average annual value of 620 crore. We look to build on this further with deepening engagement with existing and potential customers. On that note, I would now request the moderator to open the forum for any questions or suggestions that you may have. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. We have our first question from the line of Dhruvin Upadhyay from Social Finance. Please go ahead. Uh, hello. 
congratulations for a good set of numbers. Uh, my first question is towards the guidance. Uh, uh, just wanted to clarify, get some clarity on it. Are we revising our guidance from 18, 20%? to 25, 28% for the overall business or for some for a particular segment of ours? So this uh, APOBOT revision is for the overall business for the year of uh, financial year 23. Because in the last uh, uh, call, we had given the guidance of 18 to 20% growth. But now we have revised and increased from this to 25 to 28% level. Okay, so and for FY24, is it too early to say or do you have some guidance for that year as well? At this moment it is too early, but as we explained in our earlier call that the overall uh, in the next four years we are having, a, uh, we have planned of CAGR of uh, more than 20%. Yeah. Uh, now coming to the contribution of the new product addition, what kind of contribution are we looking at? Uh, from these new product additions uh, and uh, what is the order intake that we had in Q1 FY23? Okay, quarter one, 22-23, uh, we have added uh, four parts from three customers. And this is roughly around uh, yearly average sale of 24 crores, uh, around 100 crores over five years of time. And the good thing is that we have added two new logos, that is Remax, which Andreas also explained very clearly, the high opportunity with this particular account, because we call it as a Tesla for Europe, and 45% of Porsche take is in with Remax. So uh, good opportunities we have, also Ducati, which we have added, again, the third largest uh, two-wheeler maker in Europe. And the good thing, what we have grabbed is a non-auto business, a highly complex and critical part with, with a high value addition. So that is what we have added uh, uh, in last quarter. If you talk about the overall uh, mix, what we have added from 18-19, the good thing to note is we have booked 71% from a four-wheeler where I get a good margin, where it's as per our strategy. And 21% was with two wheelers with a strategic move. So this will help us further to get good risk, good value addition in, in, and in turn good sales going forward. Okay, okay. And my last question is towards the European facility that we have. Uh, the voice was, uh, was a little unclear. So, uh, have we secured the uh, gas uh, power through gas-based uh, power plants till April 23? And post that we are moving to solar, is, is my understanding correct? No, oh, it is not like that. So, there is the availability is there, but definitely uh, they will have, uh, the Europe will have the other sources and will be able to supply the gases there, but we are looking for some other alternatives like solar to reduce our cost. In India, so already have explained in the piece that already we have got this opportunity and maybe from the quarter three, we will be able to see the impact in our financial results. Okay, sir. Thank you, Nancy. That's it for my side. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, to ask a question, please press star and one on your phone. We have a next question from the line of Karati from Suyash Advisors. Please go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon to all of you. Uh, very interesting commentary. Uh, a couple of questions. One is in terms of contracting. Can you? Talk about uh, what specific terms have you put in place to protect yourself from the volatility that's been seen in the past, uh, since these are relatively longer-term contracts, one. And two, can you give share some perspective on the kind of opportunities that are emerging in the European manufacturing space due to the uh, turbulence seen over there? Uh, if at all any are emerging, are these tactical in nature or more structural in nature? So thank you. Uh, 
talking about uh, the second point on the opportunities with the euro. So the good thing is what we noted is uh, we were not adding logos in European entry, but we have noted with the change in uh, the market condition, we need to go look for uh, new customers, which we have delivered in last quarter. And also we are in now strong discussion with the existing customers to add value. And the way we started from 16, 17, with the move, the early mover in EV, now even the European uh, OEM have noticed the capacity and capability of delivering such a critical part is there with in Europe as well as India. So with that move, now we are planning to increase our portfolio with existing and, and uh, the new accounts. Sure. Yes, please. Mr. Yeah, so I was asking you about the how we uh, contracting structure. So, so you know, these are longer term contracts. How are you able to protect your profitability? You know, uh, given the volatility in costs, you know, uh, are there terms that will help you preserve a certain level of profitability, either on a per kg basis or on a percentage basis? Yes. So we have the long term contracts with all OEMs because generally, you know, that these parts of uh, technology. Uh, parts and they have to spend a lot of money and time for the development. So generally they don't go to any, another supplier. So maximum we are the single source or maybe somewhere when the volumes are high or uh, like such type of uh, risk are there with the OEM. So they go for the second source. So in this, uh, like for the uh, production of the profitability, one is the aluminium because that is the more volatile uh, commodity. So there is a complete pass through to the customers. So all, uh, whatever the uh, variation is there, so we pass on to the customer. So, and on the other side for other uh, commodities, other costs, so we have the uh, agreement with the customers so that uh, periodically we have to discuss with them and uh, take the corrections in the pricing. Sure, but, but can you specify periodicity of changes? You know, that will help. I understand people talk about uh, pass through with a lag and uh, the, you know, uh, time intervals tend to be fairly longish. It is, that is really. Uh, it is uh, with maximum customer, it is on quarterly basis. And some customers, right. they are directly involved with the suppliers. So there is no uh, impact of any uh, variation in the prices. Right, right. So, so uh, just one question to understand this better. From a uh, rupees per kg perspective, you know, what would have been the shift that you've seen? And going ahead, how can one think about that, you know, in terms of metal processed? Uh, any inputs would be interesting there? So, what... Uh, the key is, uh, you know, what happens, the back end of our processes are same, uh, which we have commonized. Of course, uh, some are very typical and need the investment. But uh, over a period of time, as we will go for a complex part, yes. the weight of the part changes. And as the weight changes, the per minute of the cycle time, you know, we are able to harness a higher value addition. That's what right. we are aiming at. Sure. Sure. Fine. Thank you so much and uh, best wishes. Thank you. Thank you. We have our next question from the line of Vishal Patel, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Good morning, everyone. I just want to uh, get details on how the, the contracts with PSA and the Toyota, which was there for the engines for the first time, which we got, how is that progressing? Okay. Yeah, so uh, PSA and Toyota, the good thing is uh, we have uh, submitted the samples and now we are ready. The samples are approved and now we are ready for the mass production. And also the good news, uh, what we are noticing, the launch, like Toyota have given, uh, announced this way, uh, one of the parts will go to the high, high, high rider. And this uh, vehicle is uh, receiving a good booking in the Indian market. So we are also hoping that our numbers 
would definitely reach uh, immediately and uh, we look for opportunity if it uh, cross expectation. But the good thing is we are ready and now and the SOP is there in the next quarter, which will be also noticed in our reserves in this quarter. Okay, so it will be a mass supply which will regular supplies which will start as per the contract from this current quarter. Yes. Okay, and I have been an uh, investor with Telecom for almost 15 years. Uh, I just have one suggestion. I think the equity is too small and the, the volumes are not there. Probably if you can split it, say, into a, a one rupees and increase the number of shares, uh, might help the investors, probably. Thank you. Well noted your suggestion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Pratik Poddar from Nippon India Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, just a couple of questions. One is uh, there has been no accretion in order book since quarter three XI22. Any thoughts as to why that has happened? Uh, yes, yes. Your uh, question is uh, in fact, we have been a little bit more prudent in accepting the order. So uh, our own uh, way has been now to balance what we have and uh, go for a higher value add, rather do the same. And, uh, uh, you know, it's a horses for courses, you know, like some something like that. So we want to play in a higher field and higher value addition. So that's where we are, a little bit checking out what is good for Alicon in the long term. And does it meet the carbon neutral uh, products which are coming up? Got it, got it. So how should I think about sir order book accretion from here on? Uh, uh, you know, when you think about order book, you should see what we have done in the last quarter. By having a very large order book and, uh, you know, the year-on-year -year changes should be very significant. The shift, how does the change happen when we change from two-wheeler to four-wheeler? It does not mean that we will leave the two-wheeler when we say we will have it below 20%. It is a bread and butter. It is something which our people have honed the skill. We are the leaders in this business. So it's a shift. And as the order book keeps coming, we will keep updating. But that is well, something which we are not at least worried as of now. So essentially, it, what you're trying to say is that, that irrespective of order book, the mix shift or the value added component within the order book is very high. So from that perspective, it is revenue, it is margin an absolute EBITDA creator, right? Yes. Okay. Second question was on the under recovery of RM. I think you mentioned that there has been a 10% price reduction from Q1 exit. So, so are you done with under recovery of RMs after this 10% price reduction? And will we see benefits growing into the next quarter on the margin side? No, margin, there will be little impact. As uh, in the earlier quarter, I was explaining that there is, uh, when we See that the uh, our margin as a percentage to sale so definitely uh, we are looking for the higher margins so when there is a recovery maybe 10 percent we are seeing but it may be stagnant or because the major impact on the prices of the rm is due to the energy cost and still energy is the issue so we feel that so there was a significant increase in the last one year so that is the reason of that is supplies are a little bit gone down but we feel that maybe after 10 percent uh, or maybe next next maybe four five percent further it will they will go down but they, uh, the 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 will stabilize that at that level yes yeah, so, so have your under recovery stopped or you have passed on the all all rm increase to the customer no our uh, no, full that that will pass uh, it is complete recovery so the recovery is complete so from here on uh if there is a price reduction, uh, the, the, the final selling prices will also be reduced, right? The customer will ask for price reductions. Yes, that uh, plus minus we have to do with in the price. Okay. 
got it got it and and just wanted to check with you you know adjusted for price inflation uh, in the last couple of years have you really outperformed industry growth in this quarter so you talked about industry growth being 39% versus your growth which is far higher but i was just thinking we are able to adjust for rm price increase which would be also reflected in your top line from a value from a volume perspective uh, has your volume grown higher than the industry growth yes Okay. Even okay. Even when we discount the RM, we do that internally. When we, I am reviewing, we uh, remove the RM fluctuation from our okay. base budget. Got it. So Got it. We see evenly uh, everything. Otherwise, our marketing people will always like to show higher, you know, a, as a natural tendency. God. And just with this revenue guidance which you gave, uh, uh, if we were to adjust for last year's low base, which was there in June 21 because of the Delta wave, and if I were to then look at now the growth you are guiding for, it looks like that for the next couple of quarters the growth will be single digit or high single digit. Is that a fair understanding? Because the bulk of the revenue growth has come this quarter, right? If you are guiding for a 25% revenue growth, uh, the next three quarters the growth looks slightly muted. uh next quarter as per our internal estimate looks nearly the same the two quarters which we have factored the last two it all depends on where usa is heading see we are all cannot be uh, escaping that as of today so that is what the team has factored if it if it pans out that it will be smaller in fact Probably, but we should be ready for it. Sorry, I'm just harping on this again. If I were to look at your trailing 12-month growth, right, the number which comes, and then I were to 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 see or or to calculate, uh, uh, you know, the guidance which you have given, uh, uh, that, that differential is is such that that mathematically it's, it seems that the growth for the next three quarters is 10-11 percent. Yes, that that uh, same thing, Mr. Chikand is explaining because many things we have factored in this while making the forecast for the next three quarters. So maybe we see that the how the things move, and we keep our fingers crossed, and maybe in the next uh, phone call, we again we will revise on the upward side. Great, sir. Thanks. Thanks, and all the best. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, to ask a question, please press star and one on your phone now. We have a next question from the line of Apurva Mehta from AM Investments. Please go ahead. Yeah, sir. Just uh, wanted your view on this margin thing because you know we had guided about 14-15 percent margin going ahead as our volume goes up, but we are still struggling with this. Kind of a eleven percent margin. Uh, uh, can you throw some light like, when we can see uh, you know some improvement in margin going ahead? Uh, because uh, that was what we had uh, projected that the, all our new orders which will be will be executed with much higher margin, close to more than fifteen percent. So you know, uh, just on that, uh, can you just? Uh, with you and let us know what you, what is your thought process yes abu was that explained because uh, you see in this quarter because, uh, if you remember in the last con call uh, as i have explained that in this year we are target uh, targeting the improvement by 0.7 to around 1% against the last year of margins that was around 10.7 or 10.8% but now we are revising that also and increasing our target uh, uh, increase that approximately 1.2 to 1.5 percent for this year. So it is not like that. In just one quarter, we will see a big jump in the margins because a lot of challenges that we have explained in our commentary, like the cost-based inflation, there is a huge cost increases in the energy, especially, and we have to mitigate that, and we have to maybe. Uh, uh, Face and we have to absorb some costs and maybe fight with the customer for some increases and they have to absorb. 
but definitely that may be when like volumes are growing up and when you are talking about the impact of the new businesses so new businesses impact of, of the higher margins that has started coming from this year but suddenly the, uh, after year on year the thing will improve in one year uh, we can't see the just uh, uh, big jump in the margins But uh, traditionally, we, because uh, our traditional margins also were around 12, 13, 14 percent, and we are, you know, last uh, December quarter and the March quarter also we were at 12 percent on lower turnover, lower turnover. But you know, uh, if we are improving, then it will be 12 plus one percent margin, or what will? Yes, for the full year, last... we are expecting to cross 12 percent. Okay. On an average, you will cross 12%. So, yeah. so on, on a turnover of close to... On the side, you see this in this quarter also, when we explained the impact of the energy. There is a huge impact. And the, again, there is an increase in the cost of the logistics. Okay. The freight cost of the containers. So, mm -hmm. those costs also we have to absorb. And definitely mm -hmm. that increase in the manpower cost because we have to take care of the people. Mm -hmm. So when we were this year, we will cl be close to 1400 crore turnover, uh, So that is that. It, it, on that, we should assume around 12 and a half percent kind of a margin if we want to uh, just. Uh, I think it is a forward-looking statement you're asking me. <laughs> but I've given the ideal. Kind yeah, of yeah. Okay, okay, okay. And, and going forward, this will gradually improve only. It will not. It will not. We will not have some big impact coming on. Because, uh, Maybe next year or going forward. First important thing was the improvement in the top line. Okay. That, uh, we are confident that uh, we are seeing the trend and like we, uh, we explained uh, see how we are moving and how the things are uh, going in the right direction. So definitely now our focus is to reduce the cost and we are also seeing maybe in the coming time some there will be some ease out in the inflation also. And on the availability of labor and, uh, you know, that side, do you see any challenges on the, on, on the, uh, uh, you know, uh, high quality labor on the train labor? Are we seeing any challenges on that? No, at this moment, we don't see any big challenge okay. for this, uh, for the availability of the skilled people. Okay. And on the expansion front, have you any uh, started working on that? Any further expansion where we uh, want to go ahead and uh, are we? It's a continuous uh, process. Like every year, we are doing the investments in the range of maybe 70 to 80, or this year maybe a little on the higher side. Uh, because it is not like that we have to put in one new plant at the automated and make a huge investment. Because mm -hmm. all our investments are linked with the order book from the customers. Okay. So when we uh, go for the new order, so uh, definitely for the, based on the requirement of their processes and uh, capacity, we have to invest. Okay. Okay. So uh, when are we planning to meet any greenfield project will come in the next two, three years time or no? Totally depends how the market moves. Because okay. uh, at this moment, we are trying to postpone that Greenfield project. Okay. So what we are, uh, your, your question is very valid. We are trying a number of factors. Uh, firstly, trying to improve internally. Uh, looking at some small value add in machining which we can outsource so that we don't take that headache of machining in now. We have our criteria, which is not complex and which are very low value add. Okay. So, and we are looking at small, uh, rather than going for fully our own uh, location, maybe we need to take a small place and rent and uh, put some machines there. So these are the measures which we is all uh, in our mind. Obviously, we keep looking at new technologies and new areas of uh, growth. So current capacity, whatever we have currently, at peak level, uh, what can our revenue be? Is you know, roughly maybe 2,000 crore or 2,500 crore or at the peak? 
see, uh, you know, what happens in capacity is a very interesting topic, as you uh, must be dealing with so many other companies. Yeah, in your yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Right. So you invest in capacity for a particular customer. Okay. Right, and then uh, the customer gives you X volume. You also know a little bit about market. You are just... Okay. So okay. our capacities are tied with the customer uh, volume. Okay. This is the automotive business as you must be dealing yeah, yeah, with. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's, uh, it's uh, something which you can't say. Uh, some plants may be running at 80%, some may be at 40%. Okay. Uh, there is a cyclicalness in the industry and things like that. So generally we are running still at 65 You know, we have a scope. We keep increasing that base. You know, we keep okay. creating that capacity. Okay. 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 Thanks a lot and wish you all the best. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. As there are no further questions, I would now like to hand the conference over to the management team for closing comments. Over to you, sir. Thank you. I hope we have been able to answer all your questions satisfactorily. Should you need any further clarifications or would like to know more about the company, please feel free to contact our team or CDR India. Thank you once again for taking the time to join us on this call and we look forward to interacting next quarter. Thank you very much. Thank you. On behalf of Alicon Castelloy Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines. The conference is no longer being recorded.